So when a patient has choroideremia, exactly what is wrong with their eyes? These patients have got a faulty gene which encodes a protein known as REP1. And without this gene, the photoreceptor cells, which are the light-sensing cells at the back of the eye, undergo degeneration. And it begins in childhood and it affects men because the missing gene is on the X chromosome. And that degeneration starts on the peripheral part of vision and gradually comes into the center until finally the last bit of vision disappears. So tell me about this trial. Tell me how you go about targeting a tiny gene in so much DNA. What we do is we commonly use a virus, which has evolved to be very effective at going into cells and delivering its own DNA only we're putting our DNA into the virus so that it does the job for us, and it does it very, very efficiently. So once the correct version of the gene is inserted using this virus vehicle, what happens to those cells? What we hope to do is by replacing the missing gene, those cells, those light-sensing cells, are then going to survive, whereas previously they would have died, and that hopefully will preserve the patient's vision for much longer than if they have the disease. How on earth do you go about inserting the virus, carrying the correct gene, into a patient's eye? Well, we need to separate the retina from the back of the eye so that we can put the virus underneath it. Professor McLaren uses a specialised flexible needle just one-tenth of a millimetre in diameter. It leaves such a small hole in the retina that it prevents the injected viral particles from escaping. So that's it. 10 billion viruses have just been injected onto the back of Stanford's eye. And, you know, it, it sounds like a lot, and it has to be, because each of those viruses is carrying a working copy of the Rep1 gene. And the more viruses you inject, the better the chances of the photoreceptor cells on the back of the eye taking in the DNA when the virus infects them. After only 90 minutes, the operation is over and the healthy genes have been delivered to the cells in the back of Stanford's eye. That was incredible. Now, Professor McLaren and his team have already operated on six other patients, and one of them was operated on over a year ago now, so I'm going to go meet him to see how the gene therapy has impacted on his life. So, Toby, tell me about how quickly did you begin to notice a difference? when I went for the first sight test, which was a month after the op. And that's when I saw that I could see more um, with the left eye, um, which was the eye they operated on, um, on the sight chart. So and how did you feel? I mean, it's a silly question, really. It was fantastic. It really was. Because um, what they had always said to me is that the trial is really to try to slow down or stop the degeneration. And here we have a situation where it seems, in fact, that there's uh, slightly reversed the process and so I can see that much more. So how has your quality of life improved so far, Toby? I think the, the most important thing is that there is real hope. I've always said that as long as I can read and play tennis, I'll be happy. And what this has done is to enable me to have very real hope that I will be able to do that. Yeah. Forgive the cliche, but it is genuinely a life-changing event that has happened, purely as a result of the gene therapy Professor McLaren and his team.